Here we go. Oh yeah. That's better. We go down the iceberg. Blah blah, spoiler warning. I saw all these iceberg videos recommended to me and I like them a lot. Why? I feel like they serve as a welcoming embrace into communities and help spread knowledge that may otherwise not be well known. Looking through the memes, and as of writing, I found no one has done a comprehensive video one on Devil May Cry, so this is me making a shot at it as it might be my favorite game franchise. Before I go any further, I want to say this video is primarily intended for people who already have a passing familiarity with the Devil May Cry series. Maybe you've played through a game, watched the anime, or are just very curious and don't care about spoilers. I'd like to thank Reddit user Chili Apples for creating this iceberg. Now, uh, I'm not actually using it, but I did crib a few ideas from it and I figured I should give some credit. Okay, so literally as I was recording this script read, Chili Apples made another iceberg. It's really good, but did not influence the script. You'll see in a moment my iceberg is smaller, but I crammed a lot of extra stuff into most entries, so I do cover most of what is on their iceberg. If you want to look further into DMC after this video, I suggest you dive down their iceberg. This is the one I'm using, created by me. Do you think I put too much? It's why I've been gone so long. I replayed every numbered Devil May Cry game and scoured the internet for more information. In addition to mysteries, I'm including things on here like fan theories, virtually all side material, and semi-obscure gameplay mechanics because I want you, yes you, Alex, to be fully immersed in the Devil May Cry fandom by the end of this video. I'm going to cover just about anything even mildly obscure about this series. Welcome aboard, and... This party's getting crazy. Let's rock. More. Virgil is Nero's father. This one I'm putting here kind of as a joke, but also for historical purposes. We take this as a given because frankly it's so obvious, but it's never outright stated until nearly the end of Devil May Cry 5 that Virgil is Nero's father. In game, that is. Back in the day, I was an avid reader of Capcom Unity, Capcom's official blog website, and in 2009, Capcom had a small convention called Captivate 09. It was there that semi-official Capcom Unity rep Carbonox Ratchet got to talk to some DMC4 localization guys. Here's the quote from the Wayback Machine, because Capcom nuked all the Capcom Unity community stuff and I had to dig this up. Devil May Cry 4 wise, one of the localization employees I was talking to confirmed to me that Nero is Virgil's son, and that this aspect was going to be implemented into the game's plot. However, the decision was made not to, which could set up a good story for the future. I argued that it was cheesy, so we'll see what happens. Well, Ratchet, looks like they did expand on that plot thread, only 10 years later. But his comment about how this information was going to be implemented reminds me of a book we will eventually talk about. Inertia. The Oxford Dictionary defines inertia in reference to physics as a property of matter by which it continues in its existing state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless that state is changed by an external force. I included it on the iceberg because I thought you might not know that. You learn something every day. Alright, joke over. So the concept of inertia has an interesting relationship with the Devil May Cry series, in particular 4. Certain moves can carry momentum over to others, which allows for a greater complexity in combos and movement management. We will get more into this as we descend lower. For now, I want to bring up one of the two minor controversies that sprung up before DMC5 fully launched. The first was that Subhuman was bad, and the singer was solicitating nudes from a minor. This was going to be on the iceberg, but that's all there was. Oh, and it's very clear the song was inspired by Reboot Dante. The second of those was when the demo came out, players noticed that this momentum tech was missing. This ruffled some feathers among the more skilled members of the community. Just after release, producer Matt Walker explained that the dev team decided to scrap inertia and tried to replace it with a revamped enemy step system. I personally don't think the two are equal in use, but I'm also not skilled enough at these games to take true advantage of either. But if you care, there is a noteworthy mod for DMC5 that patches inertia back in. Tony Redgrave Tony Redgrave was the name of the original protagonist of Resident Evil 4. 
We will get further into this soon, just be patient, I know I keep saying stuff like that. This is why Dante's pistols, ebony and ivory, say for Tony Redgrave on them. Less understandable is why Luce and Ombra, which were supposed to be Sparta's, also say Tony Redgrave on them. Tony Redgrave has been adopted into the canon of DMC as an alias Dante used for a while before the original game. His usage of this name came up a lot in the expanded material, but wasn't mentioned in game outside of Ebony and Ivory until Devil May Cry 5. The name Tony Redgrave also appears in Bayonetta. Bayonetta's relation to the Devil May Cry franchise is not just in references, but more or less being connected at the hip. There is a long, long list of Devil May Cry things mentioned in Bayonetta, and the two franchises share a creator in Hideki Kamiya. Bayonetta is slightly written in a way that tries to make connections to Devil May Cry without having to talk to Capcom. In addition to a lot of visual references, it appears the character of Enzo Farino from expanded DMC material is Enzo from Bayonetta. The Bangle of Time from DMC1 is copied wholesale, and now includes a description that describes Ava as an Umbran witch. Interestingly, Capcom's card game, Teppen, that came out after Bayonetta has a card for the Bangle of Time and also says it was Ava's. DMC1 didn't explain anything about the Bangle, so this is a deliberate reference. I'm licking the appropriate pages from the Devil May Cry and Bayonetta wikis to explain the rest. While Bayo and Dante did appear together in the Shin Megami Tensei mobile game, man it would be cool if these two series had a big time crossover. The pieces are there. Speaking of SMT, featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. You've seen this logo before. I think most people know where it's from, but I also don't want to leave anyone behind. In 2004, the game Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne was re-released as a director's cut version that would also be brought to the rest of the world as the only available release of that game. In addition to some other changes, Dante from the Devil May Cry series was added as a notable side character and reoccurring boss fight. In Europe, the game was renamed to Lucifer's Call to avoid a trademark dispute with PC survival horror game Nocturne. And on the front cover of this version was this legendary logo. And Knuckles. Mission numbers in DMC3. Let's end this first rank... layer... whatever. With one of my personal favorites. In every single mission start cutscene in Devil May Cry 3, you can find the number of that mission somewhere in the cutscene. Sometimes it's really obvious, sometimes not so much. I'm not going to show them all, because I would like it if you played through DMC3 and tried to find them all yourself. Then, once you're finished, you'll notice that the thumbnail for each cutscene in the gallery has the number in it, so if you missed any, there they are. With that, we go one Crazy. layer deeper on the... Stylberg? Majin Devil Trigger Present in only Devil May Cry 2, and only for Dante, is the Majin Devil Trigger. It can be activated when Dante has a sliver of health left, but if you get it, he's as powerful as he will be until 5. There's a couple of problems here. This is DMC 2, so you have to go out of your way to get hurt enough. If you do so, you might get yourself killed. Rare, but possible. And of course, the biggest problem is that this mechanic is never explained. It's an easter egg. Dante gets a unique moveset and everything, but nope, hidden. It isn't even in the manual. But hey, you say, you're lying. I know Dante does this in DMC5, Virgil too. Yes, I agree. Now we've reached a case of a translation mistake. Majin Devil Trigger is called that because of a hiccup in translation. It's supposed to be, in Japanese, True Demon Mode, or Shin Majin Modo. The DMC3142 art book also calls it Ultimate Devil Trigger, in reference to its almost inclusion in Devil May Cry 4. In DMC5, the form returns, still called Shin Majin, instead of the English translation calling it, I don't know, Shin Devil Trigger, Ultimate Devil Trigger, True Demon Mode, or even Majin Devil Trigger, it became Sin Devil Trigger, because I suppose it sounds like Shin and kinda sounds cool and demon-y too. But nevertheless, it was nice that it came back in a much better game. Better implemented too. Devil May Cry 4, Deadly Fortune. Our first piece of Devil May Cry print material, Devil May Cry 4, Deadly Fortune, is a set of two light novels written primarily by Bingo Murahashi. Bingo has been the main scenario writer for the Devil May Cry series since 3, and he considers these novels to be the complete version of DMC4's story. 
and some elements of the novels, such as Nero becoming part of the Devil May Cry business and Virgil much more clearly being mentioned as Nero's father, do come up in DMC5. Unfortunately, I have been unable to find a very good translation for these books. Dante sigh like in boredom. How is this again? I think this type of person has been extinct. If you don't plan to take over, can I do it myself? Trish showed a mischievous smile. Although she complained in her mouth, Dante would not drop the work related to the devil. She is very clear about this, but I will be linking a hilariously biased summary in the description. It does deviate from the plot of DMC4 somewhat, but it's still an interesting read. Visions of V and Before the Nightmare As promotion for the fifth game, two pieces of print media were made. First we have Devil May Cry 5 Before the Nightmare. This is a very canon, no ifs, ands, or buts novel that serves as a prequel for Devil May Cry 5. It, like Deadly Fortune, was written by Bingo Murahashi. Unlike Deadly Fortune though, it doesn't serve as an alternate version of events. Instead it provides some nice background details. For example, the novel states that Dante went back to the location of DMC2, and that's where he acquired Balrog. Visions of V is a manga by Tomio Ogata that shows the events of DMC5 primarily from V's, and by extension, Virgil's perspective. I like it quite a bit, probably mm, 7.5 out of 10. It's also still ongoing, and while it hasn't been officially localized, it isn't hard to find in English. It's been nearly a year since we last met. Where does the time go? This line has always bothered me because it's never explained. All that I could ever glean from it is that they met a year ago and something happened that made Dante mad. Turns out, this line is referencing the Devil May Cry 3 manga by Suguru Chayamachi. The manga is almost assuredly canon, but has one critical issue. An issue. It is missing an issue. It's unfinished. The manga does show this meeting though, and the answer is Virgil mentions that he intends to raise Temen Nigru, and that's what makes Dante mad. So uh, basically just the plot of DMC3. There could have been more, but we'll never know. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this manga. It's overly wordy, a little too edgy, and I'm not a particular fan of this art style, but it does have some pretty good moments in it. Track it down sometime if you want. Guard Flying Hey, remember the basic laws of physics? Yeah, well, they don't matter. When I was talking about inertia, this was the main tech I was referring to. Guard flying is a technique in Devil May Cry 4 that exploits a unique interaction in Dante's physics when combining a few of his moves, inertia, and his royal guard... Mm, guard. The result is some borderline unbelievable play. What you're watching now is Don Goody 990's tutorial video. I've watched this video at least six times, and I still can't get this technique down. Overall, this is a reasonably well-known thing among the community, but I bet she saw a combo video with this in it and had no idea what was going on. Devil May Cry 3 Co-op In Devil May Cry 3, if you plug in a second controller while using Doppelganger or during the Battle of Brothers part of the Arkham fight, you can control Doppelganger or Virgil respectively. This limited multiplayer was a secret and the function was not listed on the box. Former professional video game tester Wooly Madden commented during the Best Friends Let's Play of DMC3 that he was surprised no one got in trouble for this. Great easter egg! Uh, to the point that I think it even breaks compliance because the game doesn't say two players on the back of the box, I don't think. You have to report that kind of thing on the box. With the most recent re-release of DMC3, the Switch port, they doubled down on the feature, and now you have the ability to play all of Bloody Palace with Dante and Virgil in two-player. And they'll even tell you about it this time. Which is nice, because even though this easter egg is relatively well known, I didn't actually know about it for years after I originally played DMC3. Badass! Japanese Hard, Western Normal Devil May Cry 2 is a pretty easy game. This was intentional. Reception for the original game had a lot of very vocal people complain that the game was too hard and the guns didn't do enough damage. Clearly, they refused to use Easy Automatic Mode. Should I put Easy Automatic Mode on this iceberg? I accidentally activated it in DMC5 once and was very confused. Why do the combos do themselves? Then, Devil May Cry 2 came out and the exact opposite reaction happened. The game was too easy, and the guns did too much damage. But one thing changed. This reception was primarily coming not from Japan, but rather Western countries. So to please both parties, what was called hard in Japan became normal in the NTSC countries. 
One problem. Even the Japanese normal is way harder than DMC2, and hard mode is only normally supposed to be accessible after you've played through the whole game once over with weapons, skills, gauges, and items carrying over. This makes the difficulty of the original DMC3 release borderline sadistic. On top of all that, DMC3 uses yellow orbs instead of gold orbs, meaning if you die without them, you go back to the beginning of the level. Unlocking easy mode by proving you can't handle it was just the cherry on top. Don't feel bad though. That easy mode is really the intended difficulty. With the release of the special edition, gold orbs were added as an option, and the difficulty was corrected. I consider anyone who is capable of beating DMC3 on Western Normal without unlocking easy mode, i.e. dying three times total, a real god of this franchise. Before I go on to the next segment, I want to shout out Dr. Natalie Coyle, also known as Platinum Paragon, who made the essay that inspired this spot. She's a huge DMC fan and also makes many excellent articles about psychology and how it relates to video games. I'm linking the essay I referenced and her YouTube channel, which truly deserves more subscribers. She really puts a lot of thought into what she does, and she deserves to be rewarded for it. Timeline Retcon Earlier in this video, I referred to the art book Devil May Cry 3142 Graphic Arts. If it isn't obvious, the reason it is named that is because it's the chronological order the games take place in. First three, then one, then four, and finally two. But this was long before Devil May Cry 5 came out. Where does it fit? After four and before two? No. As confirmed by DMC5 producer Matt Walker, the order is now three, one, two, four, five. I suppose that looks like it makes more sense, and really it isn't that big of a deal. People just presumed for a long time that DMC2 took place at the end because Capcom didn't want to acknowledge it. They do now, and if you watch the timeline video on 5, it shows up for a whopping, what, two, three seconds? Gilver Cannon? Is it really time to talk about a book again? Yeah. When the original Devil May Cry came out, so did a canon light novel of the same name. The light novel tells a prequel story to Devil May Cry where a few things happen, but really only three notable events. The first is Dante meets a woman named Nell Goldstein who crafts two 45 caliber pistols for Dante, I mean Tony Redgrave, called Ebony and Ivory. Second, Dante fights alongside a man named Gru. Gru ends up perishing along with one of his three daughters. The third is Dante meets and then kills a man named Gilver. Gilver was a mysterious mercenary who wrapped his face in bandages and fought with a katana. Things go south, Gilver betrays Dante, and then Dante ends Gilver, only to realize at the last second that Gilver was his brother Virgil. Yeah, so is this still canon? Up until 5, everyone presumed it wasn't. In fact, it had been well known that when writing DMC3, Bingo Murahashi explicitly asked Hideki Kamiya if he could retcon this novel so Virgil could have a large presence in DMC3. Gilver notably uses and appreciates a shotgun in the novel, too. But Nell Goldstein is very canon now. Nico's her granddaughter. Drew is brought up in both Visions of E and Before the Nightmare. So how does this shotgun-loving Virgil fit in when at the time of the novel he's supposed to be Nello Angelo in the demon world? At the time I believe the connotation was that Virgil was just acting as an evil reflection of Dante and Mundus resurrected him after this novel. But according to the DMC wiki, the retcon is that Gilver is a prototype Angelo based off of battle data of Virgil and Dante. So kind of a halfway demon clone between the two of them. Which is fair, but no it isn't. Because where's the source? There is no source, not on the wiki page, and I can't find it anywhere else. This definitely sounds like something that came up in some live stream, and if I spend 10 hours or more looking for it, I might find it. But since this video has taken me a long time to make already, I'll say this instead. I have a series on this channel called Comments and Corrections, where I highlight comments and also provide corrections to errors I have made. If any of you can find a source for this, I will put it in the description of this video you're watching now, and also you'll be highlighted in that video. Dante is depressed. This one is the most popular fan theory by far. Probably because it isn't super hard to come to this conclusion. Now, I'm no psychologist, so take everything I'm about to say with a figurative dump truck worth of salt. I'm just going to try to give you some signs that people interpret as Dante being on the sadder side of life internally. First of all, his father just kind of disappeared and then died somehow when Dante was a child. I'd really like to know how exactly the most powerful demon ever just kind of died off screen by the way. And then, the big one. 
At about 8 years old, Dante was orphaned when his home was burnt to the ground. His mother murdered in front of him, and presumably his brother killed too. This led Dante on a path where he would go from living in a Victorian mansion to scrapping away in slums and killing for a living, with his only purpose in his life being eventual revenge against Mundus. I'm linking in the description an article from the US National Library of Medicine that states that there is a significant correlation between childhood trauma and it leading to chronic depression in adults just in case you had any doubts. Dante was clearly broken up over how DMC3 went. You finally meet your thought-dead twin brother and, uh-oh, he's crazy. Oops, he just locked himself in the demon world and you'll probably never see him again. Dante even cries after this, causing Lady to remark that this truly was the Final Fantasy XIII. I'm liking another study. This one from the journal Child Development that states in simple terms that sibling rivalry and fighting can lead to anxiety, lower self-esteem, and a greater depressed mood. Imagine thinking you've lost your brother forever and the demon world isn't exactly good for your mental health either, but I couldn't find a study on that. To me, the most hard-hitting example is the ending credits of the, yes, canonical DMC anime. Dante can be seen at sunset in his shop. He's drinking whiskey with a blank expression not far from the picture of his dead mother. Trish, Lady, and Patty are shown, but with how darkly they're lit and how still they are, I've always interpreted this as him being alone and imagining them there. With how sad the song that plays here is, I have a hard time seeing this as anything other than a very lonely man reflecting on the day he's had. At this point in the timeline, he believes that he's killed his brother, so that can't be healthy. In general, there is also the sad clown paradox in relation to the wacky ways he usually acts. Check in the description for that one. I'm afraid things have become a bit of a downer in here, so let me remind you. Dante's probably feeling a lot better after DMC5. He's finally made up with Virgil, and their combative relationship has become a lot less deadly thanks to Nero. Remember that he elected to be trapped in the demon world with Virgil this time, so he could be sure that he wouldn't lose him. If anything, he certainly isn't lonely. Okay, fun time. Everyone is Super Sentai. A weird coincidence that people tend to notice in the casting of the DMC series is just how many key roles have gone to Super Sentai actors. Of course, the first guy to come to mind is Johnny Young Bosch, the actor who plays Nero and Adam Park in Power Rangers. Then you've got Dan Southworth, Virgil, and well known as the Quantum Ranger. Less well known is Ruben Langdon's involvement. Ruben was doing Sentai acting in Japan. He was Mac Windy or B-Fighter Yanma in B-Fighter Kabuto. Scenes of this show were reused for Beetleborg's Metallics. I tricked you though, this isn't a coincidence. Okay, it's a coincidence for David de la Tour, reboot Virgil and the Violet Wolf Ranger, but for the other three it isn't. Ruben Langdon was brought onto Devil May Cry 3 as a producer for the cutscenes. He was primarily there for coordinating the motion capture with his company Just Cause Productions, but he did a lot of translation work too. It was while he was doing this work that he auditioned for Dante on a recommendation because he looked like the character. But being a producer, he was expected to help with auditions. Ruben previously worked on stunts for Power Rangers Time Force and had many connections in that direction. He was the one that called on Daniel Southworth, and interestingly Johnny Young Bosch as well to audition for Dante. Yeah, so I, I had all you guys audition for, I don't know if I had you audition for just Dante or Dante and Virgil, I don't, maybe Dante, both, just Dante. Just Dante. <laughs> you had me at Dante and Virgil. And Virgil. Um, and I brought in others. I think I even had Jason Font come in for, for Right, well. he, said, he said that. I think, you know, um, so these were all Power Rangers. He wasn't cool enough. <laughs> he didn't spray paint his hair. <laughs> the funny end note here is that Daniel Southworth also auditioned for Dante in DMC4 because Capcom was worried that Ruben would be unable to portray a Dante in his 30s. Ultimately, you know what happened. Now, this interview footage here... Ranger Stop 2015. What I've been showing you, and where I got most of my info for that last part, is this Devil May Cry reunion panel from Ranger Stop 2015. This is a pretty fantastic video. Ruben, Dan, and Johnny go into a lot of detail on the work they've done for the Devil May Cry series. Ruben in particular divulges a lot since he's worked in multiple aspects. What I said before is a good chunk of the info from here, but it's a great watch and you should check it out. It's also gotta be seen to be believed. Dan Southworth is an absolute riot in this video. His personality is shockingly similar to Tante. Which is weird to hear because, boy, Virgil is just his normal voice. And one of the little... Itty bitty things he does is well. You know, I think it's great how it happened because now they're gonna bring us back. You can say that, right? No. Oh. 
Okay. Okay. Perhaps in the future there's a alternate universe where. Okay. This was the first time people heard that there was going to be a Devil May Cry 5. The game wouldn't be announced until almost three years after this video came out. Thank you, Dan, for keeping the flame alive. Apocalyptic. Devil May Cry was Resident Evil 4. This one may seem like it deserves to be deeper, but honestly, it's somewhat common knowledge. Because it sounds like a huge revelation, it tends to come up a lot in trivia videos about DMC. It's true though. Devil May Cry was once Biohazard, or Resident Evil, Four. Using information primarily obtained through the book Devil May Cry 3142 Graphic Arts, we can make a pretty good picture of what could have been. Resident Evil 4, in its first incarnation, directed by Resident Evil 2 director Hideki Kamiya, was to star white-haired police officer Tony Redgrave in an inevitably Umbrella Corporation-involved investigation of a Spanish-inspired castle and its mutated inhabitants. The plot would have also involved Tony's own backstory and explanations as to his unnatural resilience and superhuman abilities. Except, instead of because demons, it would have been because biotechnology. The final point here is that we can thank Shinji Mikami for stepping in. If not for him, Devil May Cry would have become Resident Evil 4 and likely would have had to make more concessions towards that franchise. Things would have never gotten crazy. Sparta's Actual Sword. This one isn't all that hidden, but I think a lot of people glossed over it, so I'm using my right as the guy talking to put it here. In the library section of the gallery in Devil May Cry 5, there is a document called The Legend of Sparta. The first part is the usual. Sparta rose up and protected the humans, woke up to justice, sealed the demon world, blah blah. However, it does get interesting. Let me read this. He then sealed the gate connecting both worlds, using a sword as the key. While most records offer little to no details about this weapon, many speculate it to be the sword of Sparta. Pause. It's Force Edge. The sealed version of Sparta. We know this because it's a major plot point in 3 and we see it transform in the first game. Here's where it gets interesting. And yet, the following was written in a record of devil swords I discovered. The Dark Knight Sparta split his power in three parts. One blade bore his own name, the second blade was named to embody retaliation, the final blade was named to embody a god of death. If this is true, then there are two other devil swords out there besides Sparta. Obviously, the second blade is Rebellion. And the third is Yamato. We know this for certain because the kanji for Yamato makes reference to it being the sword of Enma, or Yama the Buddhist judge, or god, of death. The kicker here is that this canon document says we've never seen Sparta's true sword. The sword Sparta was only one third of his power. Imagine what would happen if all three swords could be fused back together. Well, two of them already have. I bring this up because should there ever be a DMC6, I can almost guarantee this would be a plot point. It also helps to show just how absurdly powerful Sparta was at his peak. Like, imagine a sword with the power of Devil Sword Dante and Yamato combined. Insane. Devil May Cry Pinnacle of Combat In 2008, there was a Devil May Cry 4 mobile game called Devil May Cry 4 Refrain. It was okay. I played it. I don't feel like giving it its own place on the iceberg. A much more interesting DMC mobile game is in development right now, but we may never play it. At least, in the West. At least, officially. Chinese developer Yun Chang Games is making Devil May Cry Pinnacle of Combat for iOS and Android. It's called this in Chinese. I can't read that. It has been in multiple stages of development since 2017, and has recently done three closed beta tests. It doesn't look half bad, but for a mobile game, that is. The complexity and fluidity of DMC's combat clearly doesn't translate just by watching the footage, but again, for a mobile game, it could be a million times worse. Trust me. I don't know much about the monetization this game has, but I'm sure it has to be better than... Pachinko Games. There are four Devil May Cry Pachinko games. The first was Patchy Slot Devil May Cry 3, then Patchy Slot Devil May Cry 4 followed shortly thereafter. These two virtually just reused content from 3 and 4 respectively and added very little of note. Things get more interesting when we get to the third cabinet, Devil May Cry X The Last Judgment. This one has a bunch of new cutscenes in it, and even includes the original voice cast from 4. Yo, is that Nero doing his triple S taunt with a real guitar? Now behold, the funniest line in the entire franchise. Soon, I will get to you. 
Sure. I'll be waiting for you to come play Devil May Cry Cross Patchy Slot. The last judgment was a sizable success, surprisingly, so a third pachinko machine based on DMC4 was made, called now just CR Devil May Cry 4. It came out not long ago, 2018, and again features new work from the original cast. It's crazy just how much effort these barely interactable gambling machines get, until you remember just how much money they make. I wouldn't recommend playing any of these, as pachinko is literally gambling, and I mean, are any of you actually in Japan? But the cutscenes are available on YouTube, and they're worth at least one watch. Devil May Cry The Movie Eh, the movies. In 2011, a Devil May Cry film was announced to be in development. Sony subsidiary Screen Gems was going to produce the film with the screenplay done by Kyle Ward, who wrote the Fifth Underworld movie. Screen Gems was also responsible for the Resident Evil movies, so you could guess just about how good this movie would have been. It was also supposed to be based off of DMC Devil May Cry, so you know, a match made in hell. Fitting. Has it gone anywhere? Of course not. There's been no news since then. Less well known though was the first attempt to make a DMC movie. In 2003, Capcom teamed up with Japanese media company Gaga Communications to create a big budget Devil May Cry film. The budget was set at $40 million, and they expected to start filming in 2005. Didn't happen though, and you could come to that conclusion. This press release I found is borderline incomprehensible with how bad the translation is, but it is official, and that's what I could gleam. No further news ever came up for this one either. DMC in Beautiful Joe I used to think this was a bunch of stuff literally all Devil May Cry fans were aware of, but then I saw just how low the view counts were on any video that covered this were, so I guess not. Beautiful Joe, another series founded by Hideki Kamiya. In these games, there is a character named Alistair, who primarily exists to make Devil May Cry references every five seconds. This poster is just him posed like Dante in the Japanese box art for the original Devil May Cry. In Beautiful Joe 2, he even says this. I am Alistair. The weak shall give their heart and swear their eternal loyalty to me. Joe can certainly dodge better than Dante, but then again being stabbed in the chest is more of a lifestyle choice for Dante. Without a doubt, the coolest connection is in the original. On the PS2 version of the first Beautiful Joe, you can choose to play the game as Dante. He has his own unique story, but all his dialogue is just stuff from DMC but played backwards. Text is new though, and it isn't half bad. In fact, they even give an explanation as to why Trish seemingly died and was able to come back just a minute later. I'm not spoiling it. Canon? Eh. Dante, Trish, Sparta, Nello Angelo, and Plasma show up in the PSP version of Red Hot Rumble, Beautiful Joe's bizarre puzzle platform fighter. I'd imagine Dante would have showed up more in the series if it weren't so dead. Now for one more style rank higher. Or, uh, lower, Sorry. I guess. Lady May Cry In 2008, just after Devil May Cry 4 launched, 1UP.com had the opportunity to interview the dev team. When doing so, this question came up. The ladies in the game are very well designed. Are there any plans to put them in a spin-off game? It's 2008 in a gamer magazine. By well designed, he probably means hot. Anyways, Hideaki Itsuno said, There actually was a bit of talk about making a game about Lady after Devil May Cry 3 was made. However, this didn't get off the ground. It certainly is an interesting idea, but there aren't any plans for such a game at this time. A game starring Lady, or Lady and Trish, has been wanted for a long time, hence why the Ladies Night Out DMC5 DLC rumor was so strong for so long, with so little evidence. But as far as I know, this is the only time something like this was ever publicly discussed by the dev team. Sengoku Basada Stage Play Sengoku Basada is a series that really has little to do with Devil May Cry, yet the two do manage to cross paths sometimes. The first title was renamed Devil Kings and released with a DMC-looking font. There was some costume DLC, and Ruben Langdon would later provide a very Dante-esque Date Masamune, but that's really it. But for 10 days, August 20th to 30th, 2015, you could see the two franchises come together face to face. Literally. 
Sengoku Basada vs. Devil May Cry was an action stage play that ran in Tokyo for the time I already mentioned. I haven't bothered to scrape my mediocre Japanese skill into shape to make sense of this, but every source of this play mentions the plot as Dante, Lady Trish, and Virgil come across some mysterious historical ruins while chasing after a devil, and are sent back in time to Japan's Warring States era. There, the group meets Date Masamune, Sanada Yukimura, and other characters from the Sengoku Basada franchise. I would say the most interesting part of this whole production is Virgil being an official member of the Devil May Cry crew, or at least that description implies that. We hadn't yet seen him in Nico's van, so the idea of him playing nice was pretty new. Hideaki Itsuno himself had a senior role in this play, so give it a look sometime if you're into this sort of thing. DMC 5's Secret Park It's a well-known fact that Redgrave City in 5 is based off of London and a number of other European cities, but mostly London. As part of this process, the team went out to Europe to take reference pictures. One of them was more than that. On Mission 3, it is possible to clip out of bounds. Doing so and going far enough reveals that there's a hidden layer underneath the skybox of some park with buildings in the distance. I won't make you wait. This is a 360 photograph from the Kensington Gardens in London. The exact location is right between Kensington Palace and the Round Pond. You can find a very similar viewpoint on Google Maps. Not a lot of out of bounds glitches have been found in DMC5, so I wonder if other levels have something similar. The Canadian Comics Here's one I definitely didn't know about before deep diving for this video. In 2004, Canadian comic book publisher Dreamwave Productions got a hold of the DMC license and began a licensed comic. It's an edgier and quicker retelling of the events of the original game. It is most assuredly not canon and contradicts too much to ever be thought of as such. They also use the treasonous Virgil with an I spelling. But much like the manga I talked about earlier, it was never finished. Only three issues were made, and were made by the standard Dreamwave team, who were famous for their popular Transformers series. It was written by James McDonough and Adam Patrick, and illustrated by Dreamwave founder Pat Lee. I'm not fond of the direction they went in, but it could have been a thousand times worse. Still less edgy than the reboot. Why it was never finished is quite interesting. Dreamwave closed doors rather suddenly in January 2005 while the DMC comic was in the middle of production. What exactly happened is a complicated story, but from what I've been able to gather, Dreamwave was struggling to pay artists and writers for hard-to-reckon reasons. After some time of freelancers lower on the pecking order than mainstays like Adam and James kept reporting they weren't getting paid, the same started to happen to them. To quote Adam Patchik from a 2009 interview with Newsrama, Once the late payments and excuses started to become really chronic, we knew something was wrong. While this was going on, the books continued to sell in numbers that would have thrilled any other small publisher. Yet, the creative teams for their highest selling books weren't getting paid for their work. It was at a point where my girlfriend and I had to renew our lease, and I asked directly for a clear answer about the payment situation from Dreamwave, simply to know whether we would continue to be able to afford living in our place. I was told that everything would work out, just give them time, etc, etc. Long story short, my girlfriend and I ended up stuck with a lease and none of the money I was promised would be there to pay for it. And a little later on, he said, Asking for our money became such a time-consuming ordeal that we had to ask other people to help do it for us, because it was so distracting. Please remember, this wasn't about $40, it wasn't about $400, it wasn't even about $4,000. We were talking about a debt of almost $40,000 between the two of us. Considering the time frame of what was discussed here, it is very likely that the writers for these DMC comics were never paid for their work. The artist, Pat Lee, was Dreamwave. Right as Dreamwave died, he formed a new company called Dream Engine that might have been siphoning money and gigs from Dreamwave. Crazy how stories like this can pop up when you're doing research. Mm, and Joker. As mentioned prior, Ruben Langdon did a lot of translation work for 3 on top of producing the cutscenes and some other thing I forgot about. One of the decisions he made during this process was changing Arkham's name. Originally his name was what you see on screen now. Think about this. How do you pronounce that? I'll give you a second. It's Heine. No! But I bet you said Heine, aka Butt. Ruben saw this coming and changed his name to Arkham. Here's part two. What I'm about to say is unconfirmed, but I feel like it's a pretty safe guess. Ruben knew about the Joker from Batman and named Arkham after Arkham Asylum, and as a safeguard against copyright or something, he changed the name of Joker to Jester. We know all of this from a 2007 interview from the Tales of Anime convention. 
Here's a bonus one. In the cutscene where Dante gets Cerberus as a weapon and swings it around, that's actually Dan Southworth doing the mocap. Cool how Virgil got to pretend to be Dante for a moment. Drama CDs. As with many anime, the Devil May Cry animated series got two drama CDs. You can think of drama CDs as audio-only stories. Anime episodes without the anime. The same thing your great-grandfather was listening to at home while his older brother was fighting in Germany. The first is rather interesting, and I've linked a great English summary in the description. It's notable that it was written by Bingo Murahashi, so it could very well be canon. You really should check out the link below, but the two highlights are the return of Enzo and the introduction of the character of Machiavelli. Machiavelli was said to be to guns as Sparta was to swords. He was the best, and also was a crafter of demonic firearms, including Artemis. The whole drama CD is an explanation as to why Dante so rarely has access to his weapons from previous games. He pawns them to Enzo. The second drama CD doesn't appear to be as interesting. There is no comprehensive online English translation of it. All that can be gleaned is that it's in two parts. In the first, Dante and Trish hunt a demon masquerading as Peter Pan, and in the second, the Devil May Cry crew is investigated for murder, but cleared of their names. There's really only one interesting thing that happens. One of the police officers doing the investigation refers to Lady as Mary Arkham. We always knew her real name was Mary, but Arkham being a surname is interesting. Imagine if his name still is Heine, and we just use his surname. Six skills. DMC1 Terra Sword. The original PS2 Devil May Cry had two demos. Each had differences, but only the first demo had a lot of notable ones. Dante doesn't wear his full outfit, and Alistair is called Force Edge instead of that being a different sword. Most interesting is Terra. It seems the idea at the time for Force Edge was that it would have different elemental modes. Air is the normal electric mode we're used to, but there was a fire one named Terra. You can't select it. Thankfully, I found a video from YouTube user SolidSnake11 that shows off Terra, as well as a different unused version of the grenade launcher that could fire multiple times without reloading. Seems unfinished. Without DT, there's a bit of the final effort in there, but if you DT, you can swing the sword around with fire effects. Elemental effects were an idea that would be revisited in the next two games. DMC2 to basically no effect with DT customization, but if you knew the weaknesses in 3, it could be very helpful. Ultimately, I'd prefer skill with movesets to be the major deciding factor in damage dealt, but Terra shows what could have been. Trish in the logo? Here's a continuity error I think most people miss. When you turn on the original Devil May Cry, you can see that the woman at the end of the logo is very clearly supposed to be Trish. However, at the beginning of the game, the shop Devil May Cry has this logo before Dante even meets Trish. This was long thought to be a blunder until 2011 when Hideki Kamiya came out and said, It's just a cool girl's silhouette. You can call this a cop-out, but there you go. Don't worry, there's longer ones coming up. DMC2 source code leak. On November 2nd, 2020, Capcom was hacked. They were hit with ransomware. Those responsible told Capcom that they would leak information that was stolen unless Capcom paid up. They didn't. This was a major leak. Very major. Honestly, I can't possibly overstate how crazy this is. Capcom's entire release schedule through 2024 was leaked along with some customer information. Up to 390,000 people were affected. 16,415 for sure. Multiple games had their source code leaked, one of which being Devil May Cry 2. Now obviously being a pseudo-public figure, I wasn't interested in necessarily breaking the law to get a hold of stolen code, so I looked to see if there was any information out there others have parsed. My best result came from the site Retro Reversing. They covered the main source code leaks for this and several other Capcom games. The results were... Honestly, not very interesting. The site was descriptive, but the only thing I found even mildly notable is that there was a batch file to delete stuff from Automodelista, which to me implies that DMC2 was built on top of the code or assets or something from that game. Part of me wonders if this leak hasn't been given a good look over. After all, it is the bad Devil May Cry game, so interest is low. There could be interesting things to find in there, but I won't be the one doing it. <laughs> The Musical. Man, if you thought that Sengoku Basada thing was weird, check this out. Yeah, 
So this is Devil May Cry The Live Hacker. This is a significantly newer stage play, running from March 1st to March 10th, 2019, aka concurrent with the release of Devil May Cry 5. Everything I've seen from this is bizarre. The only returning characters are Dante and Lady, the rest of the cast is new, and many of them don't really look like they belong. I'm talking about you, Liam. Less information is available in English than even the Sengoku Basada one, and I didn't find a full video online. I might revisit this one at a later date, because it does intrigue me in a way. By the time of me writing this sentence, I'm over 8,000 words into this script, and I gotta make some cuts for now. Besides, I'd rather spend my word budget on Keiji Inafune and DMC Devil May Cry. Keiji Inafune. Man, how young are you? I know some of my viewers are still teenagers, and I doubt you were heavily reading gaming sites when you were like, five. So I feel like you missed out on the legend Inafune was. Inafune was basically Mr. Mega Man. He didn't create Mega Man, but he definitely stewarded it for about 20 years. And if you're someone like me, who grew up playing a lot of Mega Man, this guy was like how Satoru Iwata was to a lot of Nintendo fans. His reputation slowly soured over time and really collapsed in 2016 with the release of Mighty No. 9 after significant delay and little to show for it. But before that, in the 2000s, Inafune was promoted over and over again and became a senior corporate officer at Capcom. He had a ton of say on what projects got greenlit and which didn't, or would even get reworked. Like how the sequel to Shadow of Rome, hidden gem by the way, became Dead Rising. As the 2000s went along, Keiji Inafune would get increasingly loud about something he felt very strongly. That Japanese game development was falling behind. And when I say falling behind, I mean at the 2009 Tokyo Game Show he literally said, Personally when I looked around at all the different games at the TGS floor, I said, Man, Japan is over. We're done. Our game industry is finished. He acted on this feeling. Keiji Inafune pushed further and further to have Western developers work on Capcom titles. Some examples from this period include Dark Void, Dead Rising 2, Bionic Commando, and a Maverick Hunter Mega Man X FPS that was never finished, and even though he would leave Capcom by the time of its release, DMC Devil May Cry. DMC fans are probably familiar with Dante being referred to as a gay cowboy in jest. Now, why is that? In 2013, Ninja Theory art director Alessandro Taini gave a GDC talk where he went over his design process and showed some slides he showed Capcom in 2010. This is the key slide. Imagine Dante in a Western movie from the global head of production, who at the time you would have been talking to Capcom, was Keiji Inafune. This follows with Dante in Brokeback Mountain, the uh, gay cowboy movie. Let's stop for a second. If you want to know how screwed DMC DMC was, this guy talks about how, during production, they wanted Dante to be like the virtually incel character from Chronicle. At least the environments were kind of cool. At first, Ninja Theory was, in their minds, rather reserved. They wanted to make something of their own, but not too controversial. But Keiji Inufune was insistent. Remember, this is the guy who's high on the kick of Western devs are the true pioneers right now. He wants something way different from what they made before. Now, let's make two things clear. One, other people were okay with this change. Hideaki Itsuno was involved in the reboot and had no issues with this new design as far as I can tell. But, Inafune was the one in charge here. Two, while I do have some disagreements with the guy, I do hope Keiji Inafune works on some cool stuff in the future. He had like a good 20 years in him, and I can't imagine he's bereft of good ideas. I brought this up on the iceberg because I feel most fans don't know the whole story. And while Capcom greats like Kamiya, Itsuno, and Shinji Mikami get brought up in conversation, this one critical moment where Inafune stepped in is often forgotten. Dominique Tereshkova Dominique Tereshkova is a reoccurring character in the Devil May Cry franchise appearing in the first four games. Don't recognize the name? I I'm sure you've seen her before. Surely you remember this, right? That's her. Yeah, the poster girl. She appears at the beginning of 1, the end of 2, the end of 3, and in this magazine Dante is reading in 4. As you can see in this rip, her name is Dominique Tereshkova. The name is likely a reference to Dominique, a bikini-clad sidekick in Space Pirate Cobra, a manga that had significant influence on Devil May Cry. Lady's name comes from there too. Tereshkova is probably referencing Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman in space. Hence the rocket. And with that out of the way, our style ranking Sorry, maxes out. Ooh, we're at the bottom, which means I get to use the creepy music now. 
Who directed DMC2? To me, this is the biggest mystery surrounding the Devil May Cry franchise. Publicly, Hideaki Itsuno is the one credited with directing Devil May Cry 2. However, we know from interviews that he was brought onto the project when it was only six months from shipping. Before that, someone else was in charge. From what is said in interviews, the DMC2 team was relatively inexperienced, so it's quite likely the person who was directing the game had never directed a game before. Itsuno specifically said that no other Capcom director could step in. As sad as it is to say, I want to stop it here. I thought about researching this pretty hard, but I came to the conclusion that I could never come to a 100% certain answer to who was the original director. If I could figure it out, it would be kind of a bombshell because people have been wondering this for many years now. Though, there's a reason we don't know their name. They don't want us to know. They're presumably ashamed of what happened, and with DMC2's reputation, I'd be scared that they'd even be harassed a bit. And that would be implying I even guessed the right person. So, let's allow this one mystery to pass us by. Trust me. I'll make it up in a minute. Okay, we're done with the creepy music. Devil May Cry Wii Prototype In 2016, game developer Redfly Studio, famous for making the Wii port of Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2, released footage of four prototypes on YouTube. This included a proposed sequel to TIE Fighter vs X-Wing, a Dig Dug game, a port of Arkham Asylum to the Wii, and a proposed Wii-only Devil May Cry game. Let's rock! The prototype takes place in what looks vaguely like the first game, with marionettes present. Dante takes on his forward look, along with the music and HUD. It's only a 5 minute video, so there isn't a ton to see here, but for a Wii game it doesn't look bad at all. Definitely compromised over 4, but yeah, I could see how it could have worked. All the information we have about this prototype comes from the video description. We were told DMC could never be done on the Wii, so we gave it a shot anyway. See what you think of what we pulled together in a few weeks. Presumably this was made for a game pitch to Capcom, but despite how obvious that may seem, I can't confirm it. What complicates things is that Redfly Studio almost assuredly doesn't exist anymore, and their given address in Austin, Texas now belongs to a company called Kazoo. They make some human resources software. Much less exciting than the Devil May Cry that could have been. The Java Trilogy there are two Devil May Cry smartphone games. The first is Devil May Cry 4 Refrain. I glossed over it earlier, it's okay. The second is Devil May Cry Pinnacle of Combat. But when you expand this to mobile phones in general, there are five games. The two we mentioned, and then three very unknown ones. Usually I like to use my own footage when it comes to games, but I have no idea how to get these games running properly, so I had to go find some. Don't forget, my sources are in the description and always will be. The first is Devil May Cry 3. It's a very simplistic 2D beat-em-up. I wish there was more to say, but there's like nothing here. It's empty. This is borderline minimum game. There's Atari games more fun than this. The second I want to bring up is Devil May Cry 4. This one has you play as Nero, and of the three it's probably the most obscure. I can't find English footage of it. Since when could he do that? This is practically a reskin of the last one. There's nothing here. I've played Flash games coded in one week by an amateur programmer fueled by warm Mountain Dew that had more substance. The most notable of these games was just called Devil May Cry. Or Devil May Cry 3D. Or sometimes Devil May Cry Dante X Virgil. Or Dante Cross Virgil? Wait, was that pachinko game Cross The Last Judgment? This game is in 3D, and boy, it's just about one of the worst looking games ever made. It looks like it's running on a PS1 from a darker timeline. The premise of this game is that it's the events of Devil May Cry 3, but instead of heading straight to Tema Nigru, Dante runs around town killing demons for a while. I can't repeat this enough, this looks atrocious. As someone who lived at the time, let me make this clear. Cell phone games were a gimmick. There were very few good ones. Probably better than mobile phone games today though, as they weren't mostly slot machines with games tacked on. Devil May Cry 3D was exclusive to Verizon Wireless in the United States and was developed by Capcom themselves. Which is shocking because this looks bootleg as all hell. It was a sub-developer though, Capcom Interactive, founded in 2005. If you're wondering what they're up to, they make microtransaction riddled Snoopy games. Four total, three exclusive to Japan, which is, side note, really weird because I consider the Peanuts franchise to be just about the most prototypically American franchise possible. The idea that some of it is exclusive to Japan just feels odd. It's like finding out baseball was mostly popular in Malaysia this whole time. What was I talking about? Oh, oh yeah. DMC 3D follows the mission structure from Shadow the Hedgehog. Each mission is extremely short, and it appears the final boss is always Cerberus. There was a re-released version called Dante X Virgil, Cross Virgil, which has nothing to do with shipping, but everything to do with the addition of Virgil, I think. He's supposed to be there. There is literally 
literally one video of proof of Virgil being in this game. That's it. Researching this, I found a very small but dedicated community to playing and archiving these old games. A lot of the newer videos seem to be appealing to people and nations who can't afford smartphones, so I have a fear that there may be individuals out there to whom these trash Java games are their only idea of what Devil May Cry is. Our style rank is maxed out, but that is dismal. The Devil May Cry PSP game. I like to end big, long, investigative videos like this on a bombshell, so here we go. In 2004, Capcom revealed that they were working on PSP games for Vampire Chronicles, aka Darkstalkers, Beautiful Joe, and Devil May Cry. This would happen for Darkstalkers and Beautiful Joe, but a Devil May Cry PSP game never materialized. IGN likely were the best at reporting on it. At E3 later in 2004, they sat down with DMC3 producer Tsuyoshi Tanaka and cutscene director Yuji Shimamura. IGN asked them directly what the status of the PSP game was, Tanaka stated, in Japanese of course. Something along the lines of he couldn't talk about it because there was nothing to talk about. Years would pass. Some sites would occasionally find out about its listing on Capcom's Japanese site or its barebones inclusion on Famitsu's upcoming PSP games list. Then, five years later, in 2009, Devil May Cry PSP was removed from that PSP list and marked as suspended from retail sale. Kotaku reached out to Capcom about this and they stated, Devil May Cry was once listed in a long string of titles and potential development for the PSP when the system was first announced, and nothing more. The implication lies on the word was, and that's that. Multiple websites would report on Kotaku's report, and nothing was heard about Devil May Cry PSP again. For the uninitiated, that's where I would have liked to end it. The moderately interesting thought that there could have been a Devil May Cry PSP game. Unfortunately though, more work must be done. August 30th, 2006. On the Gaia Online forums, user DevilTrigger22 of Dante's Inferno, the unofficial Devil May Cry guild, posted a thread about the PSP game titled Devil May Cry Dance of Sparta. I will now read his post. I'm not sure if someone posted this already, but Devil May Cry is going to the PSP. Devil May Cry Dance of Sparta, working title, also known as Devil May Cry series, is an upcoming installment to the Capcom horror action series Devil May Cry, which is scheduled to be released on the Sony PlayStation Portable handheld video game console. No release date has been officially announced, although it has been rumored to be released sometime in 2006 for North America. It is noteworthy that hardly much information has been released regarding this title, even leading some to speculate that Dance of Sparta has been cancelled. However, according to the official Capcom Japan PSP release schedule, the game, titled as Devil May Cry series, is still listed as under development with the official release date, sale price, and title to be decided. As of June 2006, not much information is available regarding the PlayStation Portable release in the Devil May Cry series, although some sources have stated that the game will once again feature Dante as the Dance of Sparta's main protagonist, it has been rumored that players will be playing as a different character. Capcom has supposedly hinted at the possibility of playing as Trish, who previously appeared in Devil May Cry. However, other candidates has also been mentioned, including Dante's twin brother Virgil and their father, the legendary Dark Knight Sparta. Also, it has been mentioned that the subtitle Dance of Sparta has not been an officially announced title according to IGN, and several rumors have been speculated that the title may be a portable version of the first Devil May Cry, most notably GameSpot. There have been rumors that a Nintendo DS version of the title is also in development. While some variations of the rumor mentioned that the DS version was unrelated to the PSP release, it would supposedly featured gameplay similar to that of Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. However, according to Capcom Japan, such a title has not been confirmed to be in production. From Wikipedia.org Man, where do we start? Even in the text it seems to discredit the title being called Dance of Sparta. Devil May Cry series is what the PSP game was listed as because Famitsu in their list meant to say a game from the Devil May Cry series is coming to the PSP. For something that kind of sounds like journalism, there's a lot of typos. This definitely wasn't written by a professional journalist or reporter. I do, however, buy it as something that was on Wikipedia. If you go back and look at articles from this time period, you'll see a lot of typos, errors, unnecessary content, just sloppy writing in general. People have forgotten just how far Wikipedia has gone. I took the dive to see what I could find. I looked up every single Devil May Cry Wikipedia article to find revisions before August 30th, 2006 and read them. I couldn't find these paragraphs. Devil Trigger 22 said that GameSpot was speculating it was a remake of the first game, but I couldn't even find that. To quote user Virgil642 in the same thread, Dance of Sparta is a good name. 
Any official sources, though? Wikipedia's info should be taken with a pinch of salt if there aren't any sources, if you know what I mean. Couldn't agree more. Also, the only thing that I've seen that's official is that there's plans for a PSP DMC game. How they'll pull it off, I don't know, but they might show us something really special. But why do I bring this up? Some rumor with no evidence on a Gaia Online thread. Simple. Because people believe it. I believed it. Sounds plausible, doesn't it? The PSP was abounding with side stories and spin-offs of console juggernauts, so it isn't hard to believe that a DMC spin-off starring a new playable character would come out. Devil Trigger 22's post references a Wikipedia article. By the wording, it seems to be one for Dance of Sparta, but if it was, it has been deleted. I checked everywhere else, and if it was deleted, it was likely for a lack of substance. And only Wikipedia admins are allowed to see deleted articles. And it seems by Virgil642's comment that there weren't any sources anyways. This was something the icebergs had on it. I've seen one video covering it, but I can't find a lick of proof that there was ever a Sparta game. In fact, all I could ever find was that it was announced quietly in 2004, and then canned in 2009. It's a fun what if, but probably nothing more. Now, if you let me... I'd like to do something I haven't done before. I'd like to call someone out on this. The one and only video I could find on this topic was from YouTuber Jojo Wi-Fi called Why Did They Cancel Devil May Cry Dance of Sparta? In this video, Jojo shows a bunch of screenshots from around the internet, but with no linked sources. And you can't really tell what website they're from unless you just know better. None of these are trustworthy sources except for what Kotaku said, which I already showed in this video and doesn't prove that it was a Sparta game. It seems his main proof is from the Devil May Cry TV Tropes trivia page, and everything else is just people discussing how cool it'll be when it comes out. I went ahead and put in my sources the sources for his video too, which includes the previously mentioned Kotaku article, but also the same Gaia on online thread I talked about earlier. Can't help but notice he skimmed over Virgil 642's comment. Now I admit, this bothers me. This is a low stakes, niche topic, which typically means you won't be fact checked for it. And that's how disinformation spreads. If no one comes along to nip it in the bud, it can become pervasive and just accept it as true. I bring this up, Jojo, because I want you to be better. You make a lot of videos about Devil May Cry and you've got a great speaking voice. You definitely take this with a degree of professionalism and it shows. But please put some of that effort into your research too. I like your subject matter, but with this little proof you come across as baseless clickbait. Maybe there really is some proof out there that the PSP game was to be about Sparta, but the burden of proof lies on the one making the claim. And you haven't convinced me. And with that note, we have officially reached the bottom of the iceberg. Wow this was long, but I've still got a few things to say. Like I stated before, there will be a comments and corrections video follow up to this, so Help me out and drop a comment if you've got something for me. I tried hard to double check my sources, but I want to make sure this video is as clean of misconceptions as possible. On my second channel, I'm going to make individual videos about each of the five main Devil May Cry games. These are going to be reviews, but I'm going out of my way to try and tackle these games from a unique perspective. I spent a very long time thinking about how well the original holds up. I've mentioned the description many times in this video, and by that, I mean a Google Doc I have in the description. It has all of my sources, all the music I used, and a PNG of the iceberg I made if you want to download it. And with that, that's that. If you've made it this far, thank you very much, and I'll see you soon. I mean it this time. Goodbye. Oh crap, I forgot to cover the DMC2 novel. Guys, Dante knows what sex is!